Hello everybody, today we're talking about the immune system, which is one of my favorite topics. Uh, the immune system is a body system, so a, a series of specialized cells and tissues in your body that fight infections, keep you healthy. And the immune system is really important because there's germs, there's bacteria, parasites, viruses everywhere, everywhere, your phone, your keyboard. And not all of these bacteria are bad, but your immune system has to constantly protect you from all these invaders. As always, this presentation is not meant to replace a class, just meant to be review, uh, help you with studying for a test or the SAT or something like that. Uh, so let's get started on the immune system. All right, so the immune system is mostly made up of uh, cells in the blood. And before we can really start talking about the immune system, we have to have the vocabulary to talk about the immune system. And that vocabulary is blood composition. So what's in the blood? The blood is not just this fluid. It's it's filled with a ton of different stuff, all these different blood cells and proteins. So first of all, we have plasma. It's the liquid portion, and it's mostly water. Your blood is all, mostly water, just like your body is, but it also has nutrients in it. It has gases, you know, oxygen, carbon dioxide, um, nutrients from what you eat to go to, to your body. Because remember, your blood's main job is to bring oxygen and food to every cell in your body. So the plasma is this liquid portion that's mostly water, and everything else in the blood is, is floating around in this plasma. Uh, it's kind of like the, the soup broth for a soup. So we have red blood cells, or RBCs, and the scientific name for these are erythrocytes. And erythrocytes carry oxygen. They have this special protein called hemoglobin that binds with heme and iron and carries oxygen around the cell. And you need oxygen for cellular respiration, right, to make energy in all your cells. Uh, if, if you don't know what cellular respiration is, you want some review on that, check out my video on uh, the history of energetics in cells. All right, we also have white blood cells, and white blood cells are really the main part of the immune system. They're called leukocytes, scientifically, and they're involved in the immune system. So they, there's a ton of different types of these cells, and we'll get into what types of, these, what types of cells there are, but they do everything from uh, eating invaders, attacking worms, uh, attacking parasites. They're involved in the uh, allergic response. They uh, create antibodies. We'll get into all this stuff. So they're these these cells, they're like soldiers to the army of the immune system, and they go around and they protect your body, keep it safe, uh, and they're really impressive, really important, there's a huge range of them, um, and collectively they're known as white blood cells. And we see in this picture here, we just have a bunch of different types of blood cells. So here's the red blood cells. Platelets are involved in clotting, macrophages, and all these others are involved in different types of immunity. All right, so let's so that's blood composition. It's really important to understand. Uh, so finally, we have platelets, thrombocytes, and they clot blood. They're kind of like little netting. Uh, so if you get a paper cut, you'll bleed for a little bit, but then you'll stop bleeding. How does that happen? Well, platelets and proteins and clotting factors in your blood basically clog up the hole, uh, preventing blood from leaking out while your skin can repair itself. And, and that's really important because it prevents infections from entering, and it also prevents you from losing all your blood for something silly like a paper cut. So... Uh, thrombocytes very important in the blood. All right, so we're talking about the immune system, so we're going to get into leukocytes and other types of immune system bodies, so cells. So we have macrophages, and all of these, again, are white blood cells. Macrophages are phagocytes, phagocytosis being the process through which cells eat things. Um, so what happens is these cells, using their cytoskeleton, uh, an organelle in, in the cell, surround bacteria and invaders with pseudopods, little arms. If you've ever seen like an amoeba moving around on a slide, they're using pseudopods to move. So these pseudopods will surround a cell and eat it up. So these macrophages, basically they see an invader, they see something they don't recognize, they're just going to go eat it. All right, we have interferons. Interferons are these uh, structures in the blood that block viral infections. So remember, Viruses are very different from bacteria. Bacteria are prokaryotes, they're cells, and viruses aren't even really living. They're just protein coats with DNA or RNA, some sort of genetic material, some sort of nucleic acid in the middle. So the immune system attacks viruses and bacteria very differently, and interferons are, are used to block viruses from entering your cells. So basically what viruses do, they enter a cell, 
they copy their DNA, they take over the cell, and then that cell just produces more viruses. So these interferons are proteins and, and things like that that prevent these viruses from entering cells, so prevent them from infecting you. Interferons, again, really, really important for blocking viral infections, especially since medicine doesn't have a great way of attacking viruses. Uh, with antibiotics, we can fight bacteria. With antifunguses, we can fight fungi, stuff like that. We have antiparasitics for worms and other organs like that, but viruses are pretty hard to fight. All right, we have histamines. Uh, right now is allergy season, so you've probably heard a lot about antihistamines. Histamines are these molecules that trigger the inflammatory response. And you might think, you know, oh, a cold is a cold is the inflammatory response, or allergies are an inflammatory response. The inflammatory response is actually really good. It's really important. We'll get into it, why it's important, and what it does, but these histamines trigger the response. They're, they, they're kind of like the wake-up call, say, hey, we need to go through this inflammatory response now. And if you take antihistamines for your allergies, you're, you're basically trying to reduce the effects of these histamines because they're acting when they shouldn't. Um, and reduce the inflammatory response. And, and we'll get into more about what the inflammatory response is, how it works in a few slides. And we also have antigens. So antigens are the foreign, the part of the foreign substance that the body recognizes. So uh, let's say you get infected with a bacteria and the bacteria has a protein on its surface and your body recognizes that protein on the surface of the bacteria and says, this isn't human. This is not supposed to be in the body. Let's get rid of it. The part of that cell, the part of that bacteria that the body recognizes is called the antigen. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily recognize the whole bacteria, it just recognizes one part of that bacteria as being bad or, or being foreign, and then um, the body will attack that antigen. So for example, going back to the uh, allergy example, when pollen gets in your system, your immune system uh, falsely thinks it's dangerous and it recognizes the antigen of the pollen a part of the pollen that it says uh uh this isn't good um and starts attacking the pollen which in turn you feel as as allergies so antigens to the foreign substance it's like an id tag that the body says this isn't right we should be attacking this this is not normal all right and then finally the antibodies are the proteins produced in response to antigens so um when we get, you know, that bacteria, we recognize it, the body's going to start producing antibodies, which are these little proteins that will bind to very specific antigens and identify it as foreign, identify it as, you know, we need to kill this fo foreigner, we need to kill this invader. Um, and, and the antibodies are the proteins that do that. And you have a ton of antibodies, a ton of different types of antibodies in your body. And we'll talk about how that, you know, specifically relates to immunity too. All right, so just like... If we picture the immune system as a castle, a medieval castle, the castle has a bunch of different lines of defense. It has a moat, it has a wall, it has archers on the wall, it has catapults throwing stuff over the wall, and then once you get inside the castle, there's soldiers and, and doors and walls. So the immune system is very similar. It has lines of defense. It has a first line, a second line, a third line. Just It doesn't need to go all out right at the beginning. It's going to do what it has to when it has to. So your first line of defense is non-specific, something like your skin. And when I say non-specific, I mean it doesn't care what kind of invader. So your skin is an example of the first line of defense. It doesn't care whether it's protecting against bacteria or virus or fungus. It's still, it'll, it'll prevent all of them from entering your body the same way. And it's a physical barrier. It's like a wall or a moat in the castle. Um, so skin, your mucus, so basically your snot inside your nose, your oral cavity, your throat, Cilia. Cilia are like little hairs that stick out of cells and, and they can um, move and when they move they can push invaders back out. So if you have a cough a lot of that is um, basically mucus being pushed by the cilia up. And your stomach acid is a, is a great example of uh, a first line of defense. It's non-specific. So if you eat something with bacteria on it, chances are almost all your food has bacteria on it. You eat it, it goes into your stomach and your stomach acid is going to kill that bacteria. It doesn't care what kind of bacteria it is. It doesn't care what kind of invader it is. It's just going to kill it so that it can't uh, take residence in your body. Uh, and that's, you know, all of these are really, really important. They're, they're your main line of defense against infection. Uh, if you didn't have your skin, you'd be sick all the time. So this first line of defense, nonspecific, and it's a barrier. It's like a wall of a castle, okay? Then we have the second line of 
defense. The second line of defense is still nonspecific, but it's inside the body. So it's not going to be something on the surface like skin or mucus. Um, it's going to be something inside the body. So the inflammatory response is an example of the second line of defense. And what the inflammatory response is, is basically your body recognizes something foreign, and it releases histamines, these molecules that rush to the site of the invasion, rush to the battlefield. And they cause a bunch of different things, like vasodilation. So they mean that means your blood vessels um, get bigger. And what that does is it improves blood flow to the to the site of the fight, and that will allow more macrophages, these molecules, these immune cells that eat bacteria and eat invaders. Um, it'll allow more white blood cells. It'll allow more nutrients to the site of the battlefield. It's like a supply line. It's it's making a larger supply line for the fight. Um, and then these histamines and this inflammatory response also makes you sneeze, makes you cough. It will increase your body temperature. It'll give you a fever. All of these things will help fight off the invader. So when you get the common cold, which is a, a rhinovirus, a type of virus, it's not the virus that makes you sick. It's actually your – well, it, it makes you sick, but it doesn't make you cough. It doesn't make you sneeze. It doesn't make you have that fever. That's your inflammatory response. That's your body fighting the virus. When your body heats up, the virus has a harder time surviving. When you start sneezing and coughing, it, it, it physically expels the virus. It prevents other things from entering your body. Um, if you get a if you get a cut in your finger and it gets a little infected, you'll see it gets red and swollen and hot. That again is your inflammatory response. So yeah, the inflammatory response isn't so much fun when it's uh, an allergic reaction, but it's really important for fighting. Invaders, and again, it's non-specific, meaning it doesn't care. I, it doesn't matter if I get a bacterial infection in the cut of my finger, or I take in some rhinovirus, the common cold. Right, my body is going to fight it the same way with this secondary line of defense. So this is kind of like archers or something. They're just gonna, they're just going to shoot at random, hopefully hit somebody and stop somebody from getting stop the invader from getting into the castle. Okay, non-specific inside the body. Inflammatory response is an example. Uh, phagocytes are another example, right? These white blood cells that just go around and eat stuff. Um, you know, they're like these huge cells. They just go around and engulf as much as they can, eat all these invaders. Um, and again, they don't care what kind of invader. They're just going to go and eat it. Um, and then interferons are also a secondary line of defense. They don't care what kind of virus. They're just going to stop viruses from entering cells. Right. And then the third line and the final line of defense is very specific. Okay, So it depends on what kind of infection I have. So if I get a virus, I'm going to have one type of third line of defense, one very specific immune response. Or if I get, in, you know, if I get uh, some bacteria, like a strep throat or something, uh, my body will have a very different line of defense to attack that. Okay, So third line of defense is inside the castle. It's very, very specific. Um, and it's hand-to-hand -hand combat, it's using antibodies. It's really, when we talk about the immune system, this is the main part, the really complicated part that that fights off a lot of infections and keeps you healthy from some really, really nasty stuff out there. So the third line of defense is specific. It attacks, it, it, it changes its attack based on what kind of invader you have. All right? So three lines of defense. First is nonspecific barriers. Second is nonspecific responses inside the body, like the inflammatory response, like phagocytes, light interferons. And the third line of defense is very specific inside the body. Uh, it gets pretty complicated, so we have a whole bunch of slides on just the third line of defense. And remember, these lines of defense work together just like the walls of a castle, the soldiers in a castle, the, the moat of a castle work together to prevent the people inside the castle. Same with your immune system, all right? Great. All right, so now we're going to talk about the specific response, so the third line of defense. And we have two main... Um, types. We have humoral immunity and we have cellular immunity. Okay, And they're just basically two different ways of fighting. So humoral right right here and cellular. Okay, So let's say I get sick with a nonspecific bacteria, just bacteria A let's call it. Okay, Bacteria A gets by my skin, gets by my stomach acid somehow. Okay. And then it gets by the immune, res the secondary responding. It gets by the phagocytes. It gets by the um, uh, the inflammatory response. It, it, it manages to get through it somehow. It's really sneaky. It's really good at fighting. It avoids all the defenses in the nonspecific response. So now it's time to fight the specific response, and we're going to do that in two ways. 
we're going to do it humorally or, or through the blood, and we're going to do it cellularly through, through cells. So let's start with humoral. So the way humoral works is we have B cells, these immune white blood cells called B cells, and they're activated by the antigen. Again, remember, what's the antigen? The antigen is the part of the invader, so the part of bacteria A that um, the, the body basically um, recognizes. So if this right here, this little blue cell, is bacteria A, right? Um, and then all these little pink things here are the antigens. They're part of the cell. Maybe they fell off, or they're proteins on the surface that the B cells recognize, okay? And when the B cells see bacteria A, let's just label this with in purple with A. So that's bacteria A, not a fungi. Um, when the B cells recognize the antigens, the, the surface markers or whatever they are that bacteria A has, they're going to start dividing like crazy, okay? They're going to make as many new soldiers as they possibly can. And they're going to do two types of soldiers, right? They're going to do... Uh, memory cells, and they're going to do plasma cells. Let's start with plasma cells. Plasma cells are soldiers, okay? They're going to go and produce antibodies, and they're just going to produce a ton of these antibodies. And remember, antibodies are the proteins, the immune proteins that uh, recognize the antigens, okay? So they're basically, the, these plasma cells are basically shooting these antibodies at the invaders, and what these antibodies do is they attach the invaders right here, right? They attach, and that'll do a bunch of things to kill the cell, the, the invaders, so bacteria A. It can surround bacteria A so that it can't invade any cells. It can clump bacteria A so that phagocytes and other cells can come and eat them up. It could even um, destroy the bacteria A's functionality by um, attaching to it, okay? And the reason this is a specific response is that if I now have bacteria B come along and infect me, there are going to be different B cells and different antibodies to fight bacteria B or to fight virus B or to fight, you know, uh, worm B or worm A, okay? So every uh, specific invader has a different antibody, a different B cell that attacks it. So there's B cells for the flu. There's B cells for... The common cold, there's B cells for whatever infections you've ever had, the measles or, or something like that, okay? So this is specific because antibodies only attach to one antigen, okay? Um, and we also said earlier that we make memory cells, and what memory cells do is they divide and they kind of just float around the blood. They float around the body so that next time I get attacked by bacteria A, these memory cells will very quickly recognize it. They'll go and produce plasma cells and will fight off the infection a lot faster okay so the reason you can't get chicken pox twice or something like that is because you have memory cells your body remembers the infection and it doesn't take a long time to start fighting it um, going back to the example of the castle right if you know these this group of, of people come up to the castle and say hey we're friends you might let them in and then they might start attacking you but with memory cells, we go, no, those guys aren't friends. Those guys are trying to kill us or trying to attack us. So you'll start fighting them right away. It'll be a lot easier, a lot faster to kill them off. So that's why vac that's how vaccines work, basically. They give you the ability to remember uh, infections. So this is why you can't get sick with the same thing twice a lot of the time. Um, but it's also the same reason you have to get a flu vaccine every year. So the flu changes. Its antigens change. It evolves so quickly that its antigens change. So what the flu vaccine is, is it's basically, it gives you some dead flu virus that they suspect will go around that year. It'll have the same antigens that the flu is going to have that year. So your body recognizes it, creates memory cells, memory cells float around your body, so when you get exposed to somebody sick in your class or somebody sick at work, you're ready to fight it off. All right? So that's humoral immunity. And we also have cellular immunity. So let's go back to vir uh, bacteria A, right? We have bacteria A floating around our body. It's still trying to get us sick, right? We also have cellular immunity, and that's done through T cells or T helper cells, which are a second type of specific immune cell. And they do a bunch of different things. One is that they activate macrophages. They activate macrophages. And macrophages, remember, just eat stuff. So the affected T cells will say, hey, we have an infection. Macrophages, go eat it. Okay, so they're helper T cells because they activate microphages like that. 
And the other thing they do is we have cytotoxic. So that's helper T cells activate macrophages, whereas cytotoxic T cells help um, destroy infected host cells, so cells that you have. So let's say bacteria A gets inside a cell in your body. What your cell is going to do is it's going to say, hey, I'm infected, come and kill me. You know, cells are, cells are really good at working together. So they're going to say, I'm infected, and they're going to basically show on their surface what they're infected with. The effector T cells will recognize the, and remember these, these T cells are specific. Um, they only recognize one invader. Um, so the effector T cell, or cytotoxic T cell, will see that it's in, infected with this, the cells infected with bacteria A, and it will then go um, and destroy that cell. Cytotoxic meaning um, toxic to cells, cyto meaning relating to cytoplasm, cytosol. So the effector T cells will basically go and kill your, your, your body cells, your, your human cells that are infected. Okay? And that's how the cytotoxic T cells work. So it's cellular, this is basically like hand to hand combat, right? Um, your cytotoxic T cells will go find one of your cells that's infected and will kill it so that the whatever's invading it, the virus, usually, or the, the bacteria can't um, reproduce, can't spread any further. Okay? Um, whereas helper T cells, right, they're just going to go activate macrophages and say, hey, we have invader A inside. Uh, come and get them. And remember, this is very specific. It only does one attacker. All right, so this is just some notes. So B lymphocytes, so B cells produce antibodies that are working in the humoral defense. Remember, antigens are unique. Um, and the antibodies will connect to these antigens and make the antibody-antigen complex that blocks these cells from entering the body. Whereas T cells, there's two types. There's helper and there's cytotoxic. Helper will... Uh, alert macrophages, cytotoxic will kill your infected cells, and they're in physical hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, and helper T cells also aid in clonal selection. Clonal selection being that cellular memory um, and the formation of memory cells. So why don't we talk a bit more about this clonal selection, this memory cells, how it works. So like I said, we have B and T cells for every infection, basically, that we've ever had. We also are... are body produces a bunch of random cells. So let's say this is our body, right? We see, oops, um, we see here, this is this is kind of like our reservoir, our library. We have immune cells for invader one, invader two, invader four, I don't know where five and six are, or three and four are. Um, so six and seven here, right? So these are all our, this is our repertoire, our library of immune cells. And each of these cells recognizes a single invader. So let's say we get infected with invader 2. So our two cells will go, oh, hello, let's go get you. It'll make a bunch of, what kind of cells are these? These are plasma cells, right? These plasma cells will go and attack the invaders. And we'll also make some memory cells. So that next time, instead of having just one or two, we have a bunch of memory cells. And the next time I get infected with um, invader 2, I'm ready to fight it. But let's say a week later I get infected with Invader 7. What's going to happen? Invader 7 is going to, this uh, immune cell is going to recognize Invader 7 and it's going to start producing a ton of 7 cells. Okay? Just go crazy on it, right? A ton of cells are produced. All these circles are cells. Sorry for the bad drawing. Um, and a few will go and fight the infection, right? And then they'll die, but they'll also kill the infection, you know, keep you healthy. And then we'll have a few that go and make memory cells. And these memory cells will float around the body so that next time you're infected with Invader 7, you're much more uh, able to fight it, and you can fight it a lot faster. So this is if you, you know, you've had chicken pox once, you can't get it again because you have memory cells. Your body isn't scrambling to find the invader and to kill it. You have all these memory cells. You're ready to fight it. You're, you know what's coming, and you know how to fight it. Okay, so plasma cells are cells that actually fight, do all the fighting, whereas memory cells... Um, are cells that are kept in the library. They they're basically float around your body, ready to notify the body of the next infection. And like these, this basically there's a library of these cells of all the infections you've ever had, um, and that's called immunological memory. So your immune system can actually remember. It remembers what you've been in, affected with, and it remembers how to fight it. All right. So I think this is one of the coolest parts of the immune system. 
it's really really smart it's ready and it's always changing it's always making you better able to survive all right so there's a bunch of different types of immunities um, so we're just going to kind of run through those talk about how they all work so first of all there's passive immunity which is temporary and basically it just means you've been given the antibodies they're borrowed not produced so newborn babies have passive immunity um, the mother will give babies um, immunity through the placenta through the womb and when the baby's born it'll be ready to fight infections because it has the antibodies but eventually those antibodies are gonna get old go away and the baby will no longer be able to fight the infections it has to you know fight it for the first time itself so passive immunity it's it's giving antibodies it's short-term and mostly through maternal immunity okay then we have active immunity which is basically what we've been talking about the whole time it's permanent it's the production of antibodies we have memory cells you've been infected with it with it before you're ready to fight it All right vaccines you hear a whole ton of stuff about vaccines on the news and you know whenever you go to the doctor so the way vaccines work is they prevent viruses and, and stuff by artificially creating active immunity and they're prevention not treatment so what does that mean what that means is basically they give you a bunch of dead virus your body goes it doesn't know the virus is dead and your body goes oh look there's an invader and it starts attacking the invader and what do you get you get memory cells and because you have those memory cells you're ready the next time you're exposed to it and because the virus is dead it doesn't make you physically sick it's not gonna attack your own cells so there's not gonna be a big fight it's just like uh, it's basically like showing a wanted picture right your your the vaccine goes into your blood and says hey look this virus this bacteria is wanted so your body goes okay makes a whole bunch of cells that are re ready to find the wanted person and when that you know wanted virus that wanted bacteria shows up you're ready to fight it it's not treatment though so if I give you a vaccine once you've already been sick it's not gonna help you your body already knows the invaders there it's just trying to fight it vaccines don't help you fight it they just help you recognize and remember um, what what viruses what infections you've had and, and there's a lot about you know vaccines causing autism or diseases like that there's no evidence no evidence at all to show that um, if you want to see a really great video about how vaccines do not cause autism and stuff go over to my way, uh, my um, YouTube page and check out um, one of the suggested uh, sites I have called healthcare triage they've got a great video on immunity and vaccines okay we also have allergies we've talked about this a bunch at the beginning of the vin uh, video it's basically a hypersensitive immune response to something that's not harmful so you know pollen gets into your body your peanuts get into your body your immune system has this massive inflammatory response for no point it's confused and these can be really dangerous people don't really know or doctors don't really understand why people are allergic um, but they do know it's an immune response to something that's not harmful and it's over the top immune response all right antibiotics antibiotics kill bacteria and we have antifungals that kill funguses there are this time they're treatment not prevention so you know you take antibiotics before an infection it's not going to help you you have to take it during the infection the other thing that people don't always understand is that antibiotics don't help kill anything but bacteria so if you go to the doctor and you have the common cold which is a virus and the doctor prescribes you antibiotics not going to help at all all right the viruses won't be affected by the chemicals in the antibiotics antibiotics help kill bacteria, help fight bacteria and they're only used for uh, treatment not prevention and then finally we talk you hear maybe a lot about this two autoimmune diseases um, a lot of them are very rare and basically what it is it's your immune system confusing what's an invader and what's not so um, multiple sclerosis what happens is your immune cells think that the sheet around your neurons your nervous system is an invader and it starts attacking your own nervous system and basically over time it breaks your nervous system down so autoimmune diseases are not well understood but what they are is they're they're your body attacking itself your body thinking you're a foreigner and starts attacking you and they can be lifelong and they can be really dangerous um, and and can lead to death but again really rare um, and not not that common the last thing we talk about HIV and AIDS a lot HIV is a virus human immunodeficiency virus right it's protein coat with RNA inside and what it does is it attacks your helper T cells 
and when it attacks your helper T cells, that basically lowers your immunity, and it can cause AIDS. AIDS is an autoimmune disease caused by the virus HIV. AIDS is human uh, is um, an autoimmune disease, right? So it's acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. AIDS, okay, which is caused by the virus HIV. So you can have HIV and not have AIDS. Um, and the other thing to kind of understand about HIV and AIDS is that most of the time HIV won't actually kill you. What will kill you is a secondary infection. Because your immune system is so weakened by the virus and by AIDS, uh, something that normally your immune system would be able to fight off very easily can kill you. Okay, so... Um, that's just a understanding that HIV and AIDS are different things. HIV is a virus. AIDS is a disease caused by the virus. Um, and HIV inf uh, infects and attacks helper T cells. Kind of a bold move for a virus to do. All right, so that is the immune system. Again, I think it's one of the coolest systems in the body. Really, really interesting about how it fights infections, how it fights disease. Um, really complicated. It's, you know, scientists spend their lifetime studying it, still don't understand it. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, thank you for watching. Don't forget to rate and subscribe. And as always, keep questioning.